Hi, Stitchy friends. My name is Sarah, and this is my channel, Stitchy Sarah Reads. And you can find me by the same name on Instagram. It's all one word, Stitchy Sarah Reads. And it's Sarah with an H at the end. Um, this is a channel about cross-stitch. Um, and I might even talk about books at some point. Not today, I'm not ready for that today. Uh, but as you can tell, I'm sitting here in front of my beautiful bookshelves. Um, reading is another one of my hobbies. So um, I might eventually incorporate some book talk into my videos, but today is just gonna be cross-stitch. And if I do eventually add that in, it'll be at the end of the video. Um, so yeah, welcome to my very first floss tube video. I hope you uh, enjoy what you see here today. So let's get started. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself first. So I live in Southwestern Ohio. I live on the outskirts of Cincinnati and I'm a fourth grade teacher. I've been doing it for about 10 years now. I teach reading and I teach math. And um, let's see, I'm also a mom of three grown children. Uh, my oldest is Kendall. She's 23. She lives in downtown Cincinnati with her boyfriend and their two kitty cats my grand kitties. My younger daughter is Maggie. She's a fashion design student in New York City. And uh, my son Jude, uh, he's 18 and he just graduated from high school. So he'll be going off to college in the fall as well. He's going uh, to an art school um, close by in Columbus, Ohio, and he's gonna be studying illustration. So um, I'm gonna be an empty nester. Don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> um, I have two precious pups. Uh, my older dog is Toby. He's 11. He's a rat terrier and um, he's my, I call him my grumpy little old man. He likes to spend most of his days up in my daughter's room sleeping. <laughs> and then we got a new dog, Daisy. Um, new to us dog. She's four years old. She does look like a tiny little puppy. Uh, she's only nine pounds. She's a little chewini. And she's, she's my precious baby. In fact, she's right here on my lap. I'll actually pick her up and show you. There's Daisy. Oh yes, hi. Okay. This is Daisy. You'll probably see her in a lot of my videos because she has to be right with me. So she's probably gonna sit in my lap here this whole time. So you might not see her the rest of the video, but she's here. So, um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Um, obviously I like to cross stitch. That's why I'm here. I've been cross stitching for almost my whole life. My mom taught me when I was really young. I want to say when I was like eight or nine, um, she taught me how to cross stitch. I remember like stitching up little ornaments that, um, my mom would put with her things to sell at our church's annual bazaar. All the ladies in the church would make all their wonderful crafty things and, and sell them. Um, at our church's bazaar and that was always a really fun memory for me. So I contributed with some cross stitch ornaments. That was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, I've been stitching. I stitched on and off when I was a kid and a teenager and I probably got a lot more into it. Um, when my kids were young, I made their stockings and I'll, I'll pull those out to show you at Christmas time. They're packed away in the basement with all of our things. Um, I remember I stitched a, a blanket for my daughter and stitched bibs and all kinds of fun things when they were little. Um, so yeah, I've been stitching on and off my, my whole life. Um, I really like haven't like delved into it as much as I'm into it now um, until the past few years. Um, you know, when my kids got older and I wasn't needed as much as I was when they were little, I've had a lot more time to myself to devote to what I want to do, which is reading and cross-stitching. So, um, so yeah, it's just been something I've always enjoyed and just even more so now that I have more time and, and I have more resources. Um, because back in the old days, for those of you who are younger and, and you've never had a world without Etsy and the internet and things like that, Back in the old days, the only ways that we had patterns to stitch was um, if you found a kit or a chart at your local craft store or um, or magazines. I excuse me. I used to subscribe. <clears throat> excuse me. I used to subscribe to a lot of magazines when I was younger. In fact, I still have all of my cross stitch magazines. I went through them the other day just for fun, and. Um, 
I have magazines that date back to 1994, <laughs> which is older than my children. So um, I have fun going back through those and looking back through the old patterns and seeing what was cool back then and what people were stitching back then. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I didn't find a pattern in one of my magazines or at the craft store, I mean, I wasn't stitching anything. That's, that's, those were my resources. And, um, you know, for the longest time up until recently, uh, I didn't even realize there were other fabrics out there to stitch on. I was, I stitched on mostly white Ada for most of my life. So, um, you know, floss tube and the and Instagram have really opened my eyes to like what's out there and what's available. And it's just so cool to see how the cross stitch world has evolved and how really there's something for everyone out there. I mean, you know, so many different types and colors of fabric so many different um, types of floss. I mean, I didn't even know there were things other than DMC for the longest time. Um, patterns, I mean, whatever you wanna stitch, there's probably a pattern for you. Uh, so it's just so cool to see, um, you know, all the different things people are stitching. That's why I love floss too, but I just love to get on and see what people are stitching. Um, some things I'm like, Oh, I've never stitched that. And some things I'm like, whoa, I need that. <laughs> and that's what's cool. I mean, like I said, there's something for everyone. And so um, I did want to show you, I while I was going through my old magazines, I was finding some little gems. Um, and I actually found a few little things that I thought I would stitch up. I, I tend to do um, some more like mid-sized to bigger projects. So I was thinking I needed to pull out some like smaller things, maybe some little Christmas ornament type things as I'm going along. Um, and I did find some cool little gems. Um, I went back and was going through my magazines and I found this issue in particular. It's uh, Just Cross Stitch. And this is from um, 2008. Yeah, back in 2008. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I actually did stitch this a few years ago. That was a cute little design. But then I saw this one, I was like, oh, I gotta stitch that. And um, I forget who the designer is. I don't quite remember. I haven't started it yet, but when I do, I'll, I'll share it with you. Oh, here it is, hold up. Oh, it's Prairie Schooler. Who knew? Yeah. So there it is. There's the Prairie Schooler design. I'm gonna, I did kit that up along with a few little Christmas ornament type things. I'm gonna stitch that soon. Just some little projects so I could have some finishes. Um, but another cool thing that I found when I was looking through this magazine, I found this pattern. Tombstone Angel. And uh, the designer is Kathy Barrick. And of course, back in 2008, I had no idea who she was, but now of course, um, she's a well-known designer. And uh, she's also the mother of Liz Matthews from Hello, Liz Matthews. And I met Liz at StitchCon. Hi, Liz. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, how cool is that? So this is a really cool pattern. Um, it's the Tombstone Angel and it says, here lies Susanna Goose, wife of Isaac and mother of Daniel. As you are now, so once was I. I am now, so must you. Oh, sorry. As I am now, so must you be. So that seems like a really cool pattern, especially something, you know, to stitch around Halloween. So I thought that was cool. Um, I found a lot of cool things, but I won't bore you with all of that today. I thought maybe I could pull some, some things out every now and then and show you. I thought that'd be fun. A little blast from the past. So, um, anyway, let's get to the stitching. I'll show you what I've been working on lately. So I'm going to start with finishes. Um, I have a finish and then I have an FFO, a fully finished object. So I'm going to start with my finish. And um, this first one, it was a stitch along from Caterpillar Cross Stitch called Made to Create. And they just released the final clue recently. And so I just had to finish it up because I was dying to see it all done. So here's what we've got. All right, so you've probably seen this one. Um, it's been all over FlossTube, all over Instagram. And it is just a gorgeous pattern. Um, each of those, each of the letters of the word create is made up of different, different um, items. You know, of course you have your artist palette over here. You've got a skein of floss. 
I love these scissors here. This tape measure, not gonna lie, I did not enjoy stitching it, but I think it really uh, just provides some cohesiveness to the design and it's just a really cool um, accent to it. So yeah, I love this. Um, not exactly sure how, how I'm gonna FFO it yet. Um, I did ask for some opinions or some suggestions on my Instagram and some people gave me some really cool ideas. So still deciding exactly how I wanna finish that up. Um, I did purchase the kit from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. So this was the fabric that came with it. I believe this was just like a 14 count. Um, it's not white, it's like a an ivory color, Ada, um, and all the called for flosses. So I stitched it exactly as they designed it. So I'm excited to display this in my craft room. All right, uh, the next thing I have was also a stitch along, and this is my um, FFO, my fully finished object. And this was a sal from, and when I say sal, if you're not familiar with that term, it stands for stitch along. Um, this was a sal from the Stitching Book Club. I really enjoy stitching her patterns and, and reading the books along with the group. And this was from A Christmas Carol. And so here's, here's what I've got. So this is only my second time making a pillow. I'm not a sewer, uh, but my daughter is, so I always have her available to help. So I love this. I love the colors, the gold and the greens and the red. Has a quote from the book. It says, I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. And I just love A Christmas Carol my favorite movie version, and I think probably a lot of other people from what I've heard, is uh, The Muppet Christmas Carol. My kids and I watch it every single year when we um, decorate the tree, so it's kind of a family tradition. Um, so it did call for a lot of French knots. I don't know how to do French knots. I've tried and I've tried and I tried, and I, it's just, I just can't do it. So instead, I used Mill Hill beads and I think they turned out really cute. I like it. So, oh, and here's the back. I was really proud of myself. I got pretty pointy corners, so I'm pretty happy with that. So there's my pillow. And I display it over here on my bookshelf with, let me grab it, <laughs> um, with my Christmas Carol. I ordered this from Amazon. It's an illustrated version of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I like to buy um, like nice versions of the books that we read so I can display them with my project. So I'll just show you. It's got fun illustrations all throughout. They're Scrooge. So yeah, these two will be displayed on my bookshelf over here so I can look at them. Even though it's not Christmas, I have this out now because I like to look at it. Okay, so those are my current finishes. Um, let's move into my whips and whips stand for work in progress. And so, um, since I was just talking about some sows, I'm going to start with my sows. Apparently I just love sows. <laughs> um, so since I was just talking about the stitching book club, let's start with them. So the current stitching book club that we're doing right now is little women. And, um, we are on the second clue. So here's what that looks like so far. Um, this picture doesn't contain everything because there is like a little floral motif that goes up here. Um, but so far we have the title, Little Women. And then the second clue was this house down here and the two trees on either side. So I've done the first clue. I have not yet started the second clue. So I'll show you where I'm at so far. And I purchased the kit from Cat from, from Stitching Book Club. And so I'm stitching on the 28 count, um, I believe it's an even weave and it's like a um, cream color. So, like an off-white. Let me show you what I've got so far. There we go. Little women. I thought the uh, words were really fun to stitch. I like all the different colors in it. Got like a couple different pinks and then you've got that gold in the middle. And I like the needle over here with the um, thread. And I'm using my needle minder from a uh, Rebel Stitcher. So that's where I'm at. I plan on starting the second clue this week. Um, 
I'm currently working on another one of my salves. So once that one's caught up, then I will get back to this one. And I am reading the book. I read the book a long time ago, probably when I was like 12 or 13. So I don't remember what the book was about. So I'm rereading it so that I can, um, you know, do the reading and the stitching along with the rest of the people who are doing it. Um, this one lives in my um, project bag from the Painted Leaf Company. You're gonna hear me talk about the Painted Leaf Company a lot because it's my mom and my sister's Etsy shop. So I'm probably their best customer. So this is one of their bags. I love this one with the little kitties and the flowers and the little mouse. It's one of my favorites. Okay. My next sow that I worked on this week was uh, the Christmas wreath from the Frosted Pumpkins. Um, let me show you a picture of what it looks like so far. We've been working on this one for a while. So here we go. There's a picture of, of the most recent clue. The most recent one was this edition over here with the, um, with the pink ornament with the reindeer in it and the snowman and the star over here. So yeah, I'm all up to date so far. I think we only have two more clues to do and then we will um, be turning this into a pillow. So I can't wait for that. I'm gonna have to find somewhere to put the pillow that my dogs won't lay on it though. I don't want dog hair all over it. Although it already has dog hair all over it, so. <laughs> I need to stitch that pattern. Isn't there a pattern that says there's probably dog hair on this? I need that one. Okay. So here's my Christmas wreath. I'm gonna kind of hold it back so you can see it. And there we are. I'm all caught up. I just caught up the other day like yesterday, I think. And I saw someone else do this on Instagram and I made uh, Mrs. Claus's glasses red. I thought those were cute. In fact, I think somebody made her glasses like red cat's eye glasses. I'm not talented enough to change the style of the glasses, but I did just change the color and I thought that was really cute. So there we are. I love this one. I feel like the, the clues go pretty fast. It doesn't take me very long to catch up on this. I don't know if that's just because I'm enjoying it or if it's just not um, as dense as it looks. I don't know, but it's fun to stitch. And I, I'm stitching that. I purchased the kit from um, Frosted Pumpkin. So I'm stitching that on the called for fabric. Let me actually pull out the thing here and tell you what fabric that is. I have it. Oh, here it is. So the fabric was uh, 14 count Ada in um, Picture This Plus in the color Heartland. And I'm using all the called for DMC. Not doing anything crazy. Okay, put that one away. All right. And this one lives in um, a dot dot goose bag. It's got the um, red checkered fabric on the outside and I can't show you but the inside has like a cute oh you can see a little bit like Christmas motifs in there okay and the last sal that I'm working on right now is the cozy cafe also by the frosted pumpkin and this one is in another painted leaf company bag um my mom made this um for me because I told her I needed like a coffee fabric to go along with my cozy cafe and um and this one's actually a little bit bigger than this one. My mom makes different sizes. You can see the difference, maybe. Yeah, you can see the difference. Um, I keep this one in a bigger bag because um, sometimes I use my 11 by 11 Q-snap, but if I'm active, actively working on it, I like to keep the Q-snap in the bag. Right now it's not on the Q-snap. Oh, there's the inside fabric. It's cute. Um, but here it is. And again, I'm using the, um, I purchased the kit. So I'm using the called for fabric. The called for fabric um, is the um, the opal cashel 28 count. Picture this plus, or sorry, picture this plus in the color opal. Excuse me. And the oh, I'll show you the pattern first. Here's where we're at so far. We are on the fourth clue. So the first one was the raspberry mocha. And then we had the matcha, then we had the Earl Grey, and now we're coming down here. And this month is strawberry lemonade, which I think is appropriate for July. It's hot. Strawberry lemonade is very refreshing for this time of year. Makes me want some. 
and I'm currently working on it right now. So I am working on the most recent clue here. Got my strawberry lemonade working down there. Can you see that? There we go. Got all the lemons. I gotta start working on the strawberry, if you know what I mean. So that's where we're at with that one. That one's gonna be so cute when it's done. Not sure how I'm gonna FFO it. I'll be anxious to see how other people decide to FFO that one. Cause like with the Christmas wreath, we're turning it into a pillow. So I already know what, where we're going with that one. But I, I guess this one's a little more open to interpretation. I don't know what I'll do with it. Okay, so those were my current sows. And so I'll just move into um, my other whips here. So um, this one I started at StitchCon. So I guess I forgot to mention that I went to StitchCon. Uh, and it was awesome. It was awesome. This was my first stitch con and um, I went with my friend Jen. As I mentioned, we live in southwestern Ohio, so it was literally like 20 minutes away from us, which was awesome. We didn't have to um, get a flight or book a hotel. We just jumped in our car and we went there every day and then we came home every night. And um, you know how awesome that that was just in our backyard. So we had such a great time. It was wonderful. We met so many wonderful friends. I mean, I'm not going to do a StitchCon recap here because you've seen them and I won't, I won't do it justice, but, um, it was just an amazing opportunity. If you ever have a chance to go, you really should. Um, you know, and people ask me like, what did you do there? I mean, I talked to people, I met people, I stitched probably not as much as I wanted to, but just just meeting new people and seeing all the things people were stitching and seeing the different fabrics they were using and the different fibers and flosses and the different um the different techniques they were using you know people were stitching in hoops people were stitching on cue snaps people had stands people were stitching in hand i mean it was just so cool to see all the different things and ways people were stitching and what I love too is that the community is just so nice and so kind like there was no judgment like oh you're stitching on that mm. like nobody does that it, it's not like that in fact at my table um there were there was a mother daughter who came to stitch con for their first time and the mother didn't know how to stitch. She came to StitchCon and she learned how to stitch at StitchCon. I mean, that's so cool. I don't know that I would have the nerve to do that, but I'm so glad she did. They were so wonderful and so delightful and it was so nice to get to meet them. And um, and the mother is still stitching. Um, we're, we're still in contact with them. And so she's still working on her project and she's still loving it. And I just think that's so cool. Um, so give them a little shout out. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Carol. <laughs> um, we also met another really nice lady who's actually local like us. Um, and her name is Rose. And uh, I actually got to meet up with her um, recently. And she made my friend and I these really cute um, needle minder like stands, like a little, like a picture frame with like a magnetic thing in it. So we could put our needle minders on it. She covered it with a really cute fabric. So thank you, Rose. Um, before I stop talking about StitchCon though, I wanted to show you something here. So um, if you've heard anything about StitchCon, you probably have heard that we do a smalls exchange. So if you wanna participate, you stitch something relatively small and then uh, you have to wrap it according to the theme of your project so that you know when, when people are going to choose what they want to get, they can kind of have an idea of what's inside. So, um, I'm really into bees right now. Um, I love stitching them. I, I just think not, I don't like real bees. I don't like, I mean, real bees are cool, but I don't want to be around them cause I don't want to get stung. Um, but stitching bees is really fun. Um, so I'm really into bees right now. So I saw this gift on the smalls exchange table. It was wrapped so beautifully and obviously, I mean, it had, bee, it had a bee on it and it had these little bee, like these wooden bee thingies hanging off of it and this ribbon and it was gorgeous. I was like, I have to have that. I have to have that, that's, that's mine. And so um, when we do the smalls exchange, Stephanie from Just Keep Stitching, she's on the, she works at Keepsakes who, which is the um, LNS that hosts StitchCon and puts, puts on the whole event. She was um, in charge of the smalls exchange. And so 
when you arrive, you get a little poker chip that has a number on it. So um, when she calls your number, you get to go up and get your, your gift. And so as soon as she called my number, I bolted out of my seat and I ran over to the table and I snatched up this gift because I had to have it. Um, she did have to get on the microphone and say, no running. Sorry. You would think I'm a teacher. I would know better, right? <laughs> anyway, um, not only was the wrapping itself gorgeous, but the gift inside um, was... It, it took my breath away. I couldn't even speak when I pulled it out. So I'm just going to show it to you. I'm going to stop talking and I'm just going to show it to you. I'm just going to turn it around so you can take in the glory, the beauty. I mean, this thing is stitched everywhere. It's stitched on the sides. It's stitched on the bottom. It's stitched on the top. It came with these beautiful little pins that say buzz. I mean, look at that stitching. Oh. And she put the year on the bottom. So um, when she stitched this, this was before COVID. And so she didn't realize or didn't know at the time that we weren't going to have StitchCon in 2020. I mean, nobody knew that. And so she added 21 at the, at the bottom there. So, I mean, I mean, she... But this and I keep saying she the she who stitched this is a wonderful lady named Linda and she's from North Carolina and she wrote the sweetest note to go with it and how she stitched it with love and you know just it was such a sweet note I actually have it on my bulletin board in my craft room she filled my gift with all kinds of cool little goodies which I didn't even need those with this I mean come on this is this speaks for itself um, but she was such a wonderful lady. I got to meet her and she told me all about um, the process of stitching this and what was going on in her life at the time. And I just, after talking to her, I didn't even feel worthy enough to have this. I kind of wanted to give it back to her and be like, you should keep this and this is important to you. So um, obviously I didn't because I'm greedy and selfish and I wanted this for myself. Um, <laughs> I'm not, but maybe a little. So I just wanted to say to Linda again, thank you so much. I cherish this, I love this, it's perfect. And I, I will keep it safe and I will treasure it for many, many, many years. So thank you so much, Linda. Um, I did feel a little bad and a little greedy because later I met another wonderful lady named Milka. She's actually on Flosstube. Her channel is Mega Stitches, and she's by the same name on Instagram, Mega Stitches. And she said, I stole, I stole the gift she wanted. So, um, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but um, no, Milka was such a wonderful person to meet. If you haven't checked out her channel, you really should. She, she is so sweet. She is so kind hearted. Even after I stole the gift she wanted, she came the next day and brought me these, I, I meant to put them on, I don't have them on. She brought me these uh, adorable, like hand beaded little um, bee earrings and said, here, you need these more than I do. So um, thank you, Milka. She was so sweet. I really enjoyed getting to know her as well. So, I mean, I could sit here all day long and name all the wonderful people I met at StitchCon and I would love to, but I don't have time. But if I, if I, you know, met you at StitchCon and we had, we had a chance to meet each other and talk, just know that I, you know, I carry those memories in my heart and I think about you. So yeah, that was um, my wonderful gift from the Smalls Exchange, I love it. So anyway, that brings me to my next whip. Sorry, that was a little bit of a tangent, I apologize. Um, but my next whip was something I started, I kitted up at, um, at StitchCon and I started it there. I had the pattern already. So this is the Tudor B by Blue Flower, the Blue Flower. I saw this, sorry for the glare, um, I saw this on Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, her channel. Uh, she was stitching this. She recently finished it, and she posted a little, like, video of her um, doing her FFO. Um, but she was stitching this, and I, and of course, I just told you I love bees, so I knew I had to stitch it. I just love the pinks and reds and golds in the pattern. So um, I started stitching this at StitchCon, and this piece is important to me. Um, 
because it uh, is, it, there's two new things, new to me things going on in this project. So the first thing is, this is my first time stitching on um, 40 count linen. Um, probably the highest count I had stitched on prior to was a 32. So this was a little more challenging for me. And then the other reason that this is important to me is because my first um, time stitching in hand. I'd never tried stitching in hand. And I do need to mention one more person at StitchCon. Um, her name was Deb, or her name is Deb, it still is. <laughs> and she was sitting at the table behind us and she was stitching in hand and I was like, how do you do that? And she was like, That's, I've always done it this way. So um, she gave me some helpful hints and tips. And so um, everything I've done on this is has all been stitching in hand. Now it is going slower. I'm not quite used to it. It does hurt my wrist because I'm probably holding it funny or just holding it too tightly. Um, but I'm going to stitch this whole thing in hand just to say that I did. And so I'm gonna stop talking about it and show it to you. Sorry, sorry that it's a little wrinkly. So here's what I've got so far. I just love, there we go, sorry. I just love how tiny and delicate the stitches are. Um, it's my first time stitching um, with just one thread. I'm stitching one over two. And like I said, it is taking me a little bit longer, so it's taking a little bit longer to see some progress on it. Um, but I just love it. It's a 40 count, I believe it's fiber on a whim, and, and it's in the color latte. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So that's what I've got. I love it. So thank you, Deb, for the encouragement. I appreciate it. And I just love, to, I love that we live in an age of social media. So like I can still keep in contact with these people. I can still see what they're stitching and I can still talk to them. Um, that's awesome. All right. Uh, my next project is um, a pattern that I purchased at StitchCon. It's another blue flower. Now, when I was at StitchCon, you've probably heard there was, um, there was a shopping area called the Annex. And in the annex, there were a lot of different trunk shows from different designers. And so I just like, I was in there all the time, just looking at every looking and buying, um, but looking at everything. And I noticed that I just kept gravitating to the blue flower and Lindy stitches. So like, apparently those designers are just my jam right now. And I love their patterns. So I bought this one, sorry, it's stuck in my bag here. Let me take it out of the plastic because this has a lot of detail in it and I'd like you to be able to see it. So it's the blue flower and it's Huckleberry Farm. I just love everything about this. And I've noticed something about myself. I love stitching things that have animals or um, birds or um, some bugs like bees or butterflies. So this has, uh, well, this has a little bit of all the things I love. So, um, yeah, and I just love the purple fabric that it's on. So let me show you what I've got so far. Um, this was a new start after StitchCon, so I'm not very far yet. Um, it's still actually in my Q-Snap because I was just working on it yesterday. I put my board up behind it. Okay. So here we are. That's what I've got so far. I'm a center starter, so... I have that butterfly that was in the center, and then I'm working on this little um, basket thing on the side there. That's what I've got so far. So I'm stitching this on a 40 count, let me pull it out so I don't say the wrong thing. So another 40 count. I'm stitching it on a 40 count um, linen from Color and Cotton in the color Mocha. And I'm using all the call for flosses Got my floss ring here. Um, there's some DMC, but the rest is all um, uh, Gentle Arts and Weeks Dye Works. So, yeah, like after, like the week after StitchCon, after we bought all these patterns, my friend Jen and I, we had to go to Keepsakes and kit them all up. So, we walked in, they're like, oh, you're back. <laughs> Maybe they didn't say it that way. Maybe I'm just interpreting it that way. Um, so this one, this project lives in another one of my Painted Leaf Company bags. And 
I love that my mom makes the matching notions bags too because I keep my, all my floss and stuff in there. And here's the back. I love this. I love all the flowers. And of course, it's got bees on it. So what's not to love? All right. And let's see what's next. All right. Another Painted Leaf Company bag. Got my cats on bicycles. Got my matching notions bag in here with all my floss in it. All right. So this, I just mentioned I love Lindy Stitches. This was another pattern I purchased at StitchCon. And this one is Stars Bright. I've had my eye on this one for a while. I just love this one. I love the colors. I just, I love things that are really colorful. So this is right up my alley. And I love stitching birds. And um, I love the quote too. It says, we would be together and have our books. And at night, be warm in our bed together with the windows open and the stars bright. So I purchased this at StitchCon. I kitted it up at StitchCon and I started it when I came home. So, um, now this fabric that I purchased, I was looking at first for something similar to this, this light kind of like minty turquoise type color. And then I moseyed on over to the Steel City Stitchers table and I saw this fabric. Now, this is a lot darker. It, it actually is darker in person than what you're seeing, but this is definitely darker than what that is. So at first I was like, oh, is that gonna be too dark? Um, but I think it's gonna work out just perfectly. So that's my start so far. I've started on these like, are these like little quilt squares? I don't know. Um, started on those and I started on the words. So I think this is gonna turn out really nice. Again, another 40 count linen. So I'm stitching one over two and I like it so far. I really like the start. I hope to get back to this one again this week. I'm someone who I don't like to really schedule my stitching or say, okay, this is what I'm working on today. Like I just pick up whatever makes me happy in that moment and that's what I stitch on. So I tend to switch projects a lot. Okay, next. Oh, okay, so this one, this pattern was a gift from my children. They bought me the pattern. They kitted it up for me for Mother's Day. I told them I wanted it, so it was just them buying what I told them I wanted. But thank you, kids. Not to not to make that seem like, oh, they don't know how to do it, but I'm particular, so. But I told them what I wanted and they got it, so thank you. All right, so this project bag that it lives in was made by me. And again, I'm not a sewer, um, but I can follow directions. So I followed the uh, tutorial from Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for the vinyl project bag. And um, my daughter, Maggie, who is a sewer, since she is a fashion design student, she helped me. Um, she sewed in the zipper. I did all the rest of it though. So here's the back. I bought this fabric at Joann's. I just loved all the beautiful woodland creatures, this majestic deer and the cute little bunny and the hedgehog. But what I really liked it for was this guy here, this mysterious owl. Maybe he's not mysterious, I don't know. Um, but I liked him because my pattern, the project that lives in this bag, has an owl. This is another Lindy Stitches. Again, I love the vibrant colors. And so I had to have the owl on the project bag because this guy's in there and he's so handsome. And it says, and it's called Tread Softly, sorry. And it says, but I being poor have only my dreams. I've spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly because you tread on my dreams. So there it is. I took it out of plastic so you could see it better. So I just love this. So I saved it. Um, they gave it to me on Mother's Day and I was like, oh, I want to start this, but I'm going to save it for something special. So I started it at StitchCon. So let me show you what I got here. Here's my start. So again, I'm a center starter. So I started with the owl and um, that's where I'm out at so far. I'm using all the called for um, flosses. There's some DM DMC, there's some dinky dyes, some weeks dye works. Um, so I'm using all of those. 
Uh, the fabric, now my kids had purchased the fabric that it calls for, but I didn't really like it with the um, flosses, so I changed it. I actually bought this fabric at StitchCon, and this fabric, I believe, is, um, I think it's a 32 count, uh, fiber on a whim in the color stream, I believe. And that's, that's not, it's looking kind of washed out. It's actually more, more blue-ish than it looks. So, yeah. Oh, here's the inside of my bag. And I made myself a matching notions bag because I have to have somewhere to put on my floss. So, I'm proud of that. I think it turned out very well. Now, I'm not going to show you in detail because there's some crooked stitching in there and that's okay. But I think it turned out good. Okay. Um, just a couple, four more here. <laughs> I work on a lot of projects at once. Excuse me. Sorry, Daisy's. Daisy's making my leg fall asleep. Okay, let's move on to this one. Another Painted Leaf Company bag. It's the Art Deco Cats. So they're on Etsy, Painted Leaf Company. Um, and when you get on there, you might be a little surprised because it's not just project bags on there. I told you it was my mom and my sister who run the shop. And um, my mom is the one who makes the project bags. My sister is a plant lady. She sells all kinds of plants. If you like plants, that's the place to go because um, she searches high and low to find the most interesting plants. And she has a green thumb that totally skipped me. My mom and my sister are really good at plants. I kill them. So um, yeah, but if you like plants, that's a great place to buy yours. So, um, so if you get on there and you're like, there's just plants on here, there's project bags too. Okay, so this next one is the Trans Pride Tapestry. And um, this artwork was created uh, by, uh, by Carrie Nacken. And it was, uh, in the, it was converted to like a cross stitch pattern by D's 20 or D20, excuse me. And you can find D20 on Instagram at D's 20 stitches, D's 20 stitches. And um, during the month of June, so Pride Month, uh, they were selling this pattern and the proceeds went to support um, organizations that um, helped um, trans people in the US and Canada. And I believe they raised over $800. So that was pretty awesome. So not only did I get a really awesome pattern to stitch, but I got to um, be part of that um, by supporting and, and buying the pattern. So um, if you are stitching this, or if you're going to stitch it, you can use the hashtag stitch for pride 2021. And stitch four is the number four pride. Okay, so my daughters and I are actually doing a little family stitch along because uh, my daughter stitched too. And uh, so we just started this the other day. My oldest daughter, Kendall, doesn't live with me. She lives downtown with her boyfriend. But um, we had a girl's day the other day. And so she came over and we all went to the movies to see In the Heights and we went out for pizza. And then we came home and we started our Trans Pride Tapestry. Um, I dyed fabric for all of us. So this fabric is dyed by me. And there's my start. Again, I'm a center starter, so I'm starting with the unicorn's mane and its face. So let me hold up the pattern again. So there's the pattern. I'm starting right there in the middle with the unicorn's face. Um, and I think it looks good so far. You can see I'm using some variegated floss for the pink in the unicorn's mane. And I'm gonna be using some variegated floss for the blue in the unicorn's mane and the white it's actually also a variegated floss. It's uh, Weeks Dye Works Snowflakes. So it's like a white with like pink and blue in it. So I think that's gonna really look cool. So yeah, my daughters are doing it on their fabric that I dyed for them. I did, I did post a picture of our progress on Instagram. So you can hop on over and see where we're at so far. I'll post updates as we go along too. But that was a fun mother-daughter um, project to do and it's supporting a great cause, so. What's not to love? Okay, fantastic. All right, I just have like three more. Thank you so much if you're still hanging in there with me. Um, I hope I'm not moving too slowly. Um, so the next thing I'm working on, oh, another Painted Leaf Company bag. This one is called the Toby bag because it features rat terriers 
which is the breed of dog that's on here. And that's the breed of my dog, Toby. So my mom named it the Toby Project Bag, and that's why. So if you go in the shop, you're like, Toby, that's my dog. <laughs> in fact, uh, my dog looks like this one here because he's all white and black. Um, so there he is. I found this fabric and I was like, mom, you got to make me a project bag. I never find rat terriers on anything. So I have a project bag with my doggy on it. So now I just name him with Daisy on it. <laughs> and so, um, let me pull it out here. Of course, I've got the match matching notions bag as well inside there. So I am stitching 100 owls by Owl Forest Embroidery. You might have seen this one before too. So um, Owl Forest Embroidery is a Russian company. They have their own website. You can find them online at Owl Forest Embroidery. And um, this is actually a free chart. They have some really amazing free charts, which is awesome. And so I've seen this one all over Instagram and I'm really loving owls right now too. I've loved owls for a while, but now I'm enjoying stitching them. And so I really wanted to do this project. So um, I contacted Keepsakes to see if they had the fabric that it called for. They did not, but Stephanie at Keepsakes from Just Keep Stitching, she's amazing. She found a good substitute for me. So the fabric that you're gonna see here is a 32 count linen from R&R Reprodu Reproductions in the color Salt Marsh Green. And I'm not very far yet. Oh, hold on, there's some thread hanging off of here. <laughs> I'm not very far yet, but I'll show you where I'm at. So I'm a center starter. I'm starting in the center here. Let me put up something up behind it so you can't see through it. There we go. So I'm starting in the center here and uh, that's where I'm at so far. So I'm just starting with that owl. Where's that pattern again? Starting with that guy there in the middle. So, I've got my garland going on here, and I'm using the um, floss from Owl Forest Embroidery, the variegated floss pack that they sell. And so you can see there's a lot of variegation here in the owl. All of this right here is actually just one floss, um, but you can see it's very like stripey. It's very variegated. Um, I'm not sure if I like that or not. Uh, I'm gonna stitch the whole owl and see what I think. Um, or maybe I'll go on Instagram and see if other people use the variegated floss and see if I like the look of theirs. Um, if it's too stripy, I might just frog it and use the DMC. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like the variegation? Do you think it's too stripy? I'm kind of on the fence right now. But um, I had to order the floss from Al Forest because their floss is amazing. Try not to lose my needle here, especially with a dog in my lap. Um, I'll show you a couple of these. They come um, with these little skeins and they're uh, attached to their other little bobbins. So you can take them and you can bobbinate them. So here's some of them. I just love the variegation in those. And then the little bobbins have the number, the floss number. So you can just pop it on there. You don't even need to write the floss number on there. So yeah, I really like the look of it um, on the skein, but I'm not positive about how it looks on the fabric right now. So I don't know, still deciding if that's gonna work for me, but I love the pattern. I'm gonna stitch it regardless. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Do you like the variegation? Is it just too much? What do you think? Okay, so. Speaking of Owl Forest Embroidery, I have another one going on. Right now they have the, their Alice in Wonderland sale going on. It's another free chart, so you can go right to their website and download it for free. Um, this one lives in another Painted Leaf Company bag. I love this one. I love the colors, the flowers, and I love the fabric that my mom used inside too. Oh, you just saw a peek of my project. <laughs> so um, I don't have a picture of like what the the um, pattern looks like so far. I just have the the um, the actual chart. I can't show that to you because you can get it for free online. Um, so again, I went, to, I called Keepsakes and asked, hey, do you have the fabric, the called for fabric? Um, they did not, but Stephanie again, picked out a really great substitution for me. So the fabric that I'm stitching on is a 32 count linen from Weeks Dye Works in the color Straw. And here's what I've got so far. 
So I'm halfway through the second part, the second clue. So all of this here was the first clue. And then this up here is the second clue. There's, um, there's another part that goes down below here. So I have to do that. So um, even though this is a sow, I started late. So this is not one that I'm trying to keep up with. So I'm not really doing the stitch along part of it. I'm just stitching it at my own pace. Um, but I love it so far. I'm really excited to finish these kind of like, you know, floral motifs because then we're going to move into some of the actual like characters and things from the book and, and the movie. So like um, next is going to be like, the, I think over here on this side is going to be, maybe it's this side. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's going to be the white rabbit. And then you've got Alice falling down the rabbit hole and some other cool things going on from the book from the story. So um, I'm really excited to get into those those parts of the pattern. So that's where I'm at so far. Again, I'm using the variegated floss from Owl Forest and I really like how it's looking. So um, you can see the variegation in like the greens. Like so all the green here is just one skein of color. It's not, I didn't switch colors. Same with the pinky reds. So I really, I'm really liking how the variegation is looking on here more so than I did on the um, Owl for the owl, 100 owls. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Okay. I've got one more thing to show you. I've been stitching on a lot of things. Whew. It's because I'm on summer vacation right now. Like, when I go back to school and I'm back to teaching, I will not be stitching on as many things because I'm not going to have as much time. So, all right. Last thing. Oh, and this is in a bag that I made. I made this one. Um, told you I'm into bees right now. So I'm not going to show you too up close because I used white thread. My daughter was like, why don't you just use black thread so it's not as noticeable? But I was too lazy. I didn't want to change it. So I'm going to use white. And now you can really tell how crooked my sewing is. That's okay. I'm the only one using it. I'm not selling it, so... If I don't mind, then who cares, right? Okay, first of all, I gotta show you the inside fabric for this bag. Another vinyl bag. There's my inside fabric, the little honeycomb and the bees. And I put a little bee charm on here. I just got the, I think I got the fabric. I wanna say it Joann's. I think I got the charm there too. So again, my daughter sewed the zipper on, but I did all the rest of it, which you can very well tell if you look at it real close but I'm not gonna show it to you real close, so. All right, this last pattern, this was one that I, I've been dying to stitch ever since I saw it. Um, I've had my eye on this pattern for so long. It was a little more expensive than a lot of the patterns I usually buy, and so I was like, I don't wanna spend that kind of money. But every time I see it, I'm like drooling. I have to stitch that. And so recently I saw that some floss tubers um, were starting you know, a stitch along or a hashtag, um, and they're stitching it. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to jump on this. I'm going to do it. So, um, I ordered from Bobby at Pumpkin Creek Primitives. If you've never ordered from her, um, her shop was on Etsy, but I think, I think she's going to be opening a, an online store. So I think right now her Etsy store might be closed. Um, and then she'll be transitioning to an online store. So, um, but if you've never had a chance to order from Bobby, um, or if you've never had a chance to watch her uh, floss tube, you really need to check her out. She's she's great. Her customer service is wonderful. She's so nice. She's so helpful, and um, and she got my my. She always gets my orders to me real quick. So, um, check her out. But I contacted her about this pattern, and she got it out to me right away. It is Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. So you may or may not have seen this chart before. It is huge and it's wonderful. I love all these different blocks with different um, vignettes going on. Um, I love the uh, Sleepy Hollow Headless Horseman guy up here. I think this one might be my favorite here, the one with the ship going down and the mermaid and the skulls down there says we are afraid so I like this one too with the creepies um so yeah I have had my eye on this one forever and I'm finally gonna stitch it 
I'm excited. Um, I think the, the floss tubers who are doing this have a hashtag, I believe it's Hall hashtag Halloween at HRH, if I'm not mistaken. So um, I need to start posting so I can share in the fun. But I, I have a little start. I haven't gotten much done. Oh yeah, I made myself a little notions bag too for my floss. This one has a lot of floss. Um, I used all the DMC. I think it's all charted in DMC, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, it's charted in DMC, but they do have the needlepoint silk conversions. Um, I can't afford to buy that much needlepoint silk, so I'm using DMC and it's gonna be awesome. Um, so yeah, I went to Keepsakes and I, I found the perfect fabric. So this is another 40 count linen from, I wanna say Mystic Fiber and I'm gonna butcher the name of this color. It's either Veteris or Veteris, I don't know. It's it's um, spelled V-E-T-E-R-I-S. However you say it, it's perfect for this pattern. It's like a brownie, tan, greeny. Oh, I'm gonna show you the whole, and this thing is gonna be big. Okay, so this fabric is cut to the size I need for this project. Sorry, it's so wrinkly, but I mean, look how huge this is. This this project's gonna take me forever to stitch and that's okay. That's fine. I'm, I don't plan on having it done right away. It's gonna be a really fun long-term project, but here I am. Now, normally I'm a center starter, but they have this um, project broken up into blocks, into 12 separate blocks. And so I started up at the um, top left-hand corner. So here's what I've got so far. Not a whole lot. <laughs> Let me show you the pattern so you can see what where I'm stitching. So I'm in this block here. So you can see I've just got like um, a couple little tombstones going on here and then I've started like the outer border. So that's where I'm at. Again, not a whole lot of progress. Um, it is a 40 count, so I'm stitching um, one strand over two. And I'm just loving the look of those tight little tiny stitches using my new nut needle minder that I bought at um, StitchCon from the Rebel Stitcher. Thought that was appropriate with the skeleton. So that's where I'm at. So I really wanna work some more on this this week as well. So yeah, those are my whips. So thank you so much for sticking around. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't um, go off on too many tangents and I didn't bore you. Um, hopefully you enjoyed seeing what I'm working on, just like I enjoy seeing what everybody else on FlossTube is working on. Um, since this is my first video, I would definitely appreciate any comments that you have for me or suggestions or ideas. Um, I really appreciate you sticking around to see what I'm working on and to, um, and to get to know me a little bit. Uh, if you liked my video, if you enjoyed watching this, please um, hit the like button. And if you'd like to subscribe and see more of my videos, I would really appreciate that. Um, definitely, sorry, my dog's snoring. <laughs> definitely leave me some comments and let me know what you're stitching on and and um, what you're what you're working on and just what you're doing. What how's your summer going? I'd love to hear from you and connect with you. So. Um, I'm just gonna sign off now. I'm gonna say goodbye, have a great day, happy stitching, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.